بسم الله والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد أيها الأحباب continue on in our study of شر السنة by إمام بارباهاري رحمه الله تعالى the last point we mentioned was that there are no analogies in the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and we also pointed out, as the ulama point out, that the Sunnah here referenced is referencing making analogies in aqidah, issues of creed, not with regarding to furu fiddin things uh, masail where it is permissible to have. Uh, some Messiah that are where it's permissible to have differences or that the affair is is broader than that which is usually uh, which is contained in Messiah of, of fiqh as Bin Uthaymeen rahimahullah ta'ala said akthara Messiah of fiqhiyah he said that most of the issues in fiqh are dhaniya that they are based upon the greatest uh, amount of evidence or the stronger of the viewpoint but instead they're, they're not qat'i qat'i meaning that there's a text which is very clear where there's no issue for debate or discussion and this is what we are talking about when we're talking about issues of aqidah that we don't de debate whether the Muslim, the Mu'mineen will see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yawm al qiyamah and we don't debate that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is one and debate his issues of tawheed instead we believe in his divine names and attributes as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed fi kitabihi al kareem and as the Nabi and the Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has <coughs> articulated in his authentic sunnah alayhi salatu wa salam. So we believe as the nasus came. And this is regarding to the issues of creed. And this is what Imam Babahari is referring to here. And even the text, Shara Sunnah, in general, although a sunnah to the Salaf, Yishmel Adin Kullu, that the, the Salaf used to refer to the sunnah uh, as referring to the whole religion of Islam. And this is going back to the statement of Imam Babahari, Rahimullah Ta'ala, in the beginning of the treaties, where he said, Islam wa sunnah wa sunnah to heal Islam. That Islam is a sunnah, and the sunnah is Islam. So you can't have them, you can't separate the two. And this is something very important, ayyul ahbab, ayyul ahabati fillah, that you have to realize this and propagate this. Please propagate this qaida, because we still get people all the time who want to debate and debate on jahil, 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 that they're very ignorant. They haven't studied anything. They hardly know anything about the religion. And they want to speak and they want to debate anyone. They want to raise their head up and debate and argue about issues in usul al deen. They want to debate about issues of, uh, brother, uh, I don't follow the sunnah because uh, the Quran. Uh, is a speech of Allah and I don't need to follow the Sunnah. Well, this is an absolute ignorant batil, ibtal al batil. This is the most false of statements because, this, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Kitab al Kareem, wa Allah wa ati rasul. Follow Allah and follow His Messenger. Or obey Allah and obey His, his Messenger. Alayhi salatu wa All throughout the Quran. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says, Kitab al Kareem, that the Prophet alayhi salatu didn't speak from his desires, he spoke from Wahi. He spoke from Wahi. So the Sunnah is Wahi. And this is why the Sunnah, you don't know, tell me anyone who can uh, uh, perform the Islamic prayer as we know it to be, coming from Kitab or Sunnah, how could you do this properly in accordance to the way it's known by the Muslims uh, by just reading the Quran? The Quran is perfect. However, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed the Qur'an, which is his divine speech, the kalam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and also revealed the sunnah on the tongue of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, and they are together. We need them both because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam illustrated how to practice the Qur'an. You could not practice the Qur'an without the sunnah, the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. So you need both, ayyullah ahabba. Articulate that to your brothers and sisters. Maybe we can, if one person is guided, as the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said in an authentic hadith, "Qala alayhi salatu wasalam, li'an yahdi Allahu bika rajalin wahidin khayr lakum min hamra nam." That if one person 
is guided. It's better than you than the red camels. That if one man is guided by your hand, it's better for you than the red camels. And the red camels, Ayyuhabbatifillah, they are considered some of the highest forms of wealth to the Arab in the uh, times, uh, the pre-Islamic times and Islamic times as well in the Arab Peninsula. This was considered something very, very uh, valuable, the camel. And even now, even now, people make millions of dollars off camels, camel trading and safeguarding their camels. And it's still a very precious form of wealth uh, <clears throat> amongst the Arabs and probably some of the other countries that uh, have camels, like in, in, in certain parts of Africa and, and especially North Africa. And the point being, Ayyul Ahbab, is that we follow the kitab was sunnah, and we need the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You can't distinguish and, and separate them uh, from one another. That we need kitab illa wa sunnah to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the understanding of the salaf of this ummah to practice Islam properly. Back to the subject at hand, more specifically, to complete this section really quickly, I wanted to mention some of the narrations of the salaf of this ummah uh, per per pertaining to this issue, this qaida, there are no analogies for the sunnah. And the sunnah, again, referring to what? Referring to creed. Qala Abu Uthman as-Sabuni rahimahullah ta'ala. He said, Lakad shahida li thalika kulu ashab al-hadith lana aqidah to him ma'rafata rabbihim azza wa jal bi sifatihi allati nataqa biha wahihi wa tanzilihi O shahid lahu biha Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ala ma waradat al-akhbar bihi wa naqalahu al-ulama thaqat anhu wa yathabituna lahu jalla jalalahu minha wa ma athbatahu li nafsihi fi kitabihi wa ala lisan rasulihi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam This is the qaida that Imam Sabuni mentioned uh, rahimahullah ta'ala a very important qaida He said that everyone from Ahla Hadith, the people from Ahla Hadith, Kulu Ashab al Hadith, because their Aqidah, they, they witnessed this or they testified to this, this Qaida, this principle, that knowing the way to know Allah, Maruf the Rabbihim Azawajal, knowing Allah the Almighty, the Most High, is we know Him by His Sifat, by His divine attributes, which He articulated in his revelation and his speech, his divine speech, meaning the revelation to his prophets alayhim salatu wasalam, like the Zabur, like the Injil, like the Quran, all of these, uh, the divine books of Allah Azza wa Jal, Suhuf Ibrahim wa Musa, all of these uh, kutub, these books of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are his contained his wahi, contained his revelation, his divine revelation, and Ahl Sunnah, Ahl Iman, Ahl Islam believes in these books to be the speech of Allah and uh, that they were perfect. But the prior scriptures were sent to particular people, and <coughs> they had particular sharia, and they were uh, tampered with and nullified as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala out of his infinite wisdom did not uh, have them so that they would be protected forever. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did that for the Qur'an, the final message for all of mankind, all of those who were not perhaps sent a messenger. And so, uh, Ahla Hadith, that, we, that they believe that what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in His revelation about his, his divine uh, attributes, that they believe in that. And then w they also believe that what the Prophet wasallam said, as was mentioned in sound narrations, that the ulama, the trustworthy narrators in ulama uh, narrated, that they affirm this. They affirm what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala affirmed for himself in his book, and on the tongue of his messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they affirm that. Ayyul Ahabbati Fillah, that is a qaida azimah, that qaida, that principle that we just mentioned, that Imam Sabuni, one of our salaf, mentioned. 
that sums it up. There really doesn't need to be anything else said about that. There's some other narrations I want to mention, but because our time is short, we'll leave it there and we'll mention that very briefly in the next sitting. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.